the explosive ending of Joaquin Phoenix's origin story for the Joker will have fans debating his version of the iconic comic book villain for years to come. However, the original ending was even more chilling and had a brutal connection to Heath Ledger's Joker. On top of that, over 30 minutes of additional footage didn't make it into the final film, meaning there are lots of deleted scenes missing from the theatrical cut. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing all the deleted scenes from 2019's Joker, and explaining the alternate ending you never got to see. There will of course be spoilers, so take care if you haven't seen the movie yet. In the film, we watch Arthur Fleck pass through multiple breaking points on the way to his transformation into the Joker. One of these is his discovery of the abuse he suffered as a three-year-old child, but the original screenplay delved even deeper into Arthur's troubled childhood. In a scene scrapped from the final film, Arthur revealed to Sophie that as a child he'd been bullied by other children who mocked him and nicknamed him Happy because of his affliction. By the time he was ten years old, Arthur was so sick of it that he took a razor to his mouth and cut a smile onto his face, telling his bullies, You want Happy? Here, how's this for Happy? The childhood injury left Arthur with scars around the corners of his mouth, and brings to mind the stories of how Heath Ledger's Joker claimed he got his scars. You want to know how I got these scars? My father was a drinker, and one night he comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? He sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that. Face. The original ending for Joker was going to revisit Arthur's horrific childhood self-harm in a scene where after the police car crashes, Arthur escapes, grabs a broken piece of glass, and uses it to carve a long smile into the corners of his mouth again. Although Joker is R-rated and obviously violent, it feels like this original ending would have been even more shocking and brutal. It's possible the filmmakers or studio considered showing Arthur inflict this injury on himself too gruesome to show on screen. There is a nod to this original idea in the final version of the film though, when during the riots, Arthur takes the blood in his mouth caused by the car crash and paints a bloody, elongated smile onto his face with his fingers. It's also possible the studio decided they wanted to avoid any suggestion that this Joker could be connected with Heath Ledger's version. I stick a razor in my mouth and do this myself. Now I'm always smiling. The filmmakers have stressed multiple times that the movie is not connected in any way to the DCEU, and the screenplay also states that the story takes place in its own universe and has no connection to any of the DC films that have come before it. Arthur's facial scars would have also made the scene where he meets the young Bruce Wayne even creepier, because originally young Bruce was going to stare at the scars around Arthur's mouth and then reach out to touch them, foreshadowing the future connection between the two characters. You, you complete me. The very final scene of Arthur in Arkham State Hospital was also going to be quite different. Originally, his cut smile was going to be all stitched up, and the scene with the hospital doctor played out a little longer. In an earlier script, she asked him if he was keeping up to date with his journal and if he'd written about his episode. Arthur nodded and said it was how he remembered it, but when the doctor looked in the book, it was full of empty pages. The movie then ended with an orderly walking Arthur back to his cell while he danced to the tune of Frank Sinatra's That's Life. In contrast to the theatrical version, in the original screenplay, Arthur doesn't appear to kill the hospital doctor, nor does he seem to be about to escape from the ward. On top of these changes to the ending, there are numerous deleted scenes from the first cut of the movie which, according to director Todd Phillips, is a solid half hour longer than the final version. There are some key moments in the trailers such as these which didn't make it into the final movie, and I'm going to go through the screenplay and footage from the set to let you know what these deleted scenes are. Arthur's relationship with Sophie is imaginary in the final version of the movie, but originally that wasn't the case in the script, and all of Arthur and Sophie's scenes were real and did actually happen. There are also several additional scenes between Arthur and Sophie which were deleted from the final film. After Arthur stalks and follows Sophie to where she works at Gotham Savings Bank, there's on-set footage of Joaquin Phoenix coming out of the bank, meaning there was an additional scene inside. In the screenplay, Arthur went inside the bank and walked up to Sophie who worked there as a teller and pretended he wanted to open an account. In this sequence, which was scrapped from the movie, Arthur saw Sophie visibly shudder when an older bank manager put his hand on her shoulder. Later when Arthur and Sophie are out together, she tells him she's been fired after filing a complaint about the manager harassing her and trying to sleep with her. And there's another deleted scene in the trailers, where Arthur is carrying his wand of flowers as he walks along the corridor of his apartment block. 
He's wearing his full Joker outfit and is on his way to the Murray Franklin show. In the original screenplay, Arthur leaves the flowers and an envelope full of money at Sophie's apartment door, together with a note asking her to watch him on TV. This scene changed in the final film with Arthur simply exiting his building without taking anything to Sophie. There's an interesting deleted scene after Arthur is sacked and returns to the talent agency to collect his things from his locker. After Arthur leaves, there's on-set footage of Randall chasing after him and the two of them arguing, then Arthur taking off Randall's clown nose and throwing it into the road. The original screenplay explains that during this cutscene, Randall is annoyed that Arthur mentioned that he'd given him the gun. Randall warns Arthur that the cops are all over the subway murders and are now looking for a clown and that they'll eventually track him down. Arthur denies he had anything to do with the killings, but Randall seems to know the truth, and he goes on to tell Arthur that a lot of people in the city are happy about what happened to the Wall Street guys. Randall also tells his ex-colleague that masks are now being sold based on Arthur's clown face. A cut scene teased in the trailers shows Arthur getting thrown out of Wayne Hall after his run-in with Thomas Wayne. The screenplay describes the scene in more detail, and that Arthur, as a performer, knows how to take a fall and plays it up in front of the protesters for all it's worth. He rolls to his feet with a bit of panache and the protesters go crazy, cheering and applauding his act, with Arthur taking a deep dramatic bow. This deleted scene, together with Randall's scrapped scene, definitely play up even more the sense of how Arthur's actions are igniting Gotham's citizens to rise up against the rich. A really interesting fantasy subplot that was cut from the final film involves Arthur's ginger cat. In the original screenplay, the cat appeared to Arthur whenever he was in his apartment, purring or staring at him and generally observing whatever he was doing. And as Arthur slowly transformed into the Joker, he began talking to the cat. The final scene with the cat happens just after Arthur kills Randall. We see it sitting on a windowsill, though the script makes a point of saying that it has no reflection, suggesting that all along the cat was just another manifestation of Arthur's delusions and lack of grip on reality. At that moment, he lets the cat out of the window, telling it to be free, indicating how Arthur was finally setting himself free to embrace a personality of the Joker entirely. This imaginary cat could have been an intriguing subplot that paralleled Arthur's descent into madness, but instead it looks like in the final movie, the filmmakers took the fantasy element of the cat and merged it with Sophie's storyline instead. The scene after Arthur kills the three Wall Street guys on the subway was originally quite different. In the original screenplay, Arthur runs into the public bathroom and ends up trying to shoot himself in the head before hiding the gun away, then washing the clown makeup off his face. In the final film, this scene was completely changed, with Arthur dancing around and seemingly embracing this side of himself. In fact, Arthur's dancing was something Phillips and Phoenix gave more prominence to in the final version. Phillips said in a Q&A that he always thought that Arthur had music in him, and that they added the dancing to the bathroom scene to show that the music is fighting to get out. Another deleted scene had Arthur personally going to Thomas Wayne's offices to hand deliver a letter from his mother to her former employer. There's on-set footage of a scene we never saw in the final film of Joaquin Phoenix outside an office and running up to someone with a letter before falling over. In the screenplay, Arthur also goes inside the office and asks to see Thomas Wayne, but the receptionist refuses and he ends up getting thrown out of the building by security guards. After Arthur's mother is taken to hospital, there's a deleted scene in the screenplay where a doctor and couple of nurses come up to Arthur and ask him if he's really the guy from the clip that was played on the Murray Franklin show. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. Arthur tries to deny it, but the doctor and nurses are convinced he's the guy they saw on TV and begin to point out how unfunny he was and that Murray made a real fool of him. Arthur ends up really mad and tells them to go before he strangles all of them with a stethoscope. Later, after Arthur has killed his mother, there's a deleted scene from the trailers which shows Arthur alone outside. This looks like the scene from the screenplay where Arthur is at his mother's grave in Gotham's Potter's Field Cemetery. Arthur was the only person who attended his mother's funeral, and the two detectives tracking Arthur were also watching him from a distance at that point. One of Joaquin Phoenix's favourite scenes ended up cut from the final edit. The scene was part of the rant and monologue that Joker delivers on the Murray Franklin show just before he shoots the host in the head. 
In an interview with the Associated Press, Phoenix explained that he experimented a lot with his performance, how in some scenes he would cry and in other versions of the same scene he would make jokes or be angry. The actor claimed that his best take for the rant Arthur gives on Murray's show couldn't be used because it didn't work when it was put together with everything else in the movie. According to Phoenix, the version used in the movie wasn't very good, but it worked best in the context of the entire film. So what did you think of this Joker origin story? And are there any deleted scenes you wish had been included? Leave your thoughts about the movie in the comments below. If you want to learn about more amazing movie deleted scenes, tap left for the horrific Pennywise scenes cut from IT Chapter 2, or tap right for another video you're sure to like. And if you enjoyed this, a like is hugely appreciated. And why not unleash your inner movie lover by subscribing to get more videos like this every week. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!